Well, hello everybody. It's Dr. Drake 63 here again today. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk about magazines. Some of my favorites. Over time. No, I'm just kidding. These kind of magazines, guys. Promise. Mostly going to look at magazines for AKs and ARs. I'm not going to tell you the history on each one. Uh, I've also got some... Um, uh, a couple examples of hunting rifle, modern hunting rifle magazines, little box magazines we'll look at, as well as this drum magazine. So, the first thing we can all agree on, boys, this is not called a clip. Let's take a closer in-depth look. I'm going to start by taking a look at 5.56 five, mags. I've got a nice little pouch over here. I'm going to take a look at 5.56. Five, five, really for me, the simplest out of anything. Here's what I know. All P mags work. Now, this particular bag I have uh, uh, is loaded out with 300 blackout ammo. Supersonic. But P mags, any generation I've ever worked, have worked great. I don't have failures with them. Very simple. This is spring-loaded. You can slide the bottom of that off if any reason you need to service the thing. Uh, but I've had great luck with them. I've had great luck with the 30 rounders. This is an example of a 20 rounder. Reason I have that rubber band uh, around it is, is uh, that's what I used to use to keep my 5.56 and 300 blackout separate. The best bag mags though that I've found are steel. This is a magazine that is uh, used by uh, at least one state's National Guard. I've got several of these. These are not attractive to look at. It's crimped on the bottom, so basically once this magazine quits working, you throw it away. Um, if you are in the U.S. military, you do not have uh, a magazine collection that you become attached and you care if you have the same magazine a year from now. Uh, we as gun owners are different. Um, a little bit nicer version of the same thing. I get these from uh, Palmetto State and um, sometimes I'm getting these for like I want to say nine bucks but these are extremely sturdy. I like them. They work every time and they've got a nice, they're aluminum, they've got a nice black finish and uh, uh, they work perfectly so I like it. Steel lips which is a preference on, on all of these. Um, Here's an example of a 40 rounder. And uh, I am not a big fan of Pro Mag anything. I don't know why I have this. I do not believe I ever bought it. Uh, but I do not like these. They are not reliable. Don't ask me why. I don't make them. Um, but I would strongly recommend against Pro Mags. So, without further ado. Yeah. Well, I think we all know what this is. That's the AK-47 and 7.62. And there are lots of choices available for magazines for this guy. You can see some different styles up front. You've got the Bakelite, which is kind of a fiberglass construction. Uh, these are real trendy, for lack of a better word. Uh, this particular one, the star indicates, it's Russian made by Tula. Actually had some feeding issues with that. This is real typical of kind of a cheap, new manufactured, I think they're Korean, steel magazine you can get these days. They work great. Um, they wobble uh, more than others, so the tolerances aren't quite there. Along the same lines, this was new. I think this is Korean, but I can't even say. I, it's got the, the thicker feeling here in the steel lips. Okay, And steel lips are important on these because as the bolt slides down and chambers each round, um, on an AK especially, the tolerances there are not going to be anywhere near as tight as what you're going to have uh, with the AR-15 platform. And... Uh, what you end up getting is if you have a plastic-lipped magazine 
Oh, such as this one right here. Now this is a P mag, okay? And um, it looks good, it feels good, but it's got plastic lips. And what happens is, as you can see right where my finger is wiggling, what happens is, is that bolt comes slamming through and because the tolerances are a little bit more of a wiggle, uh, it's impacting these lips and they wear out real quick. That's why when you hear metal feed lips, that's what you're talking about. And that's why this one, um, I would not use range mag. So that one's flying over there too. Okay. It never fails when you buy a, uh, a used AK from somebody. They always says, hey man, it comes with mags. This is what it always comes with. You guys know what it is? Or do I need to turn it around? Yes, sir. It's the Tapco. The infamous Tapco mag. I think uh, the last, uh, I bought an SAR a while back and uh, came with six of these. And the first thing I did based on experience of these things jamming, all sorts of issues, double feeds. You hear it from everybody too. So I don't know who's having success with these, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, here's some different uh, mags that uh, I have. These are polymer. They're 45 round magazines. 762 by 39. They're made in Bulgaria and they do have steel lips. I don't know if you can see them, but they're they're impregnated into this plastic. Okay, so steel feed lips. Again, we said that's important. Um, these things wobble like crazy. And that's why they have tape around them and they're ready to get shipped off to somebody who needs to have a 45 round uh, magazine. Just uh, a word about uh, these pouches while I'm on it. These green ones are actually made out of vinyl. They are Yugoslavian made. Now I was told that by the guy that that sold them to me. They're very durable. They're a five cell pouch. As you can see it buckles up nice and tight and there's room on either side for either a tool kit or an oiler. Uh, but these are nice. Could probably make a purse line out of that for uh, for tactical stuff for gals. I don't know. And uh, also a lot of these um, that uh, that I was able to pick up at a local farm and fleet store and had them. These are Bulgarian four cell pa uh, pouches, and these hold uh, these hold either type of magazine, whether it's uh, five four five. Um, as well as uh, 762 and the green ones do a great job also with 556 magazines so got to make sure I've got my stuff well marked um, continuing on with uh, the AK magazines it's a real simple design what you see here is these ribs are actually stamped into the sides of these uh, for strength so you can use a lighter gauge metal and make it stronger by stamping it. Okay, uh, Not unlike what we see for some reinforcements on uh, AK receivers and the like. Okay, you've got what you've got here on the bottom is a little detent and behind that is the spring that goes all the way up to what this is which is called the follower. Very interesting, very easy to take apart. You push on this and then you go backwards. Let's, let's look at that in real life. Obviously the key is to not let parts go flying across the room. So you need to keep some pressure on that spring as you're taking the base plate off. There you can see the spring just goes on forever and ever. You can see the inside. 
Not a lot to it. Simple construction. Putting it back together, same thing. You need to be careful as you start compressing that spring to index it with your finger like I'm doing. And then of course, as you go to put the base plate back on, don't start out backwards like I'm doing here. So we're going to use a little dexterity, flip it around, and that's how she slides on. Yeah, let's get our finger out of there while we're at it. And there you have it. As you can see here, this is what an AK magazine looks like in its simple um, dissected version. As you can see, this mainly slides in and out of the magazine itself. Here you can see very simple, hollow construction. The ones that I like the best have the beefiest uh, upper portion here, and I don't know the technical name for that. I know these are the feed lips. Um, I'm sure there's a name for that. Feed lip reinforcement plate. But look how long this spring is. And at the bottom, you can see the, the retaining plate, or actually the, the portion of the detent that goes into the retaining plate. But who would have guessed that the spring would ever be that long? And you can see your follower here. So, you know what I forgot to do with this freaking crap co? Yeah. Let's see how I can do with my grouping. Uh, I don't know. We'll keep at it. One of my favorite magazines is this Romanian 75 round drum that uh, is imported by Century Arms. You'll see. The strange little spiral design. What does that do? I'll show you in a second. Serves a very good purpose. Um, I have only used this a couple times and basically did mag dumps with it and uh, it worked tremendously. There was absolutely no issues whatsoever. Maybe following the instructions help. As you can see, this is wound as with a spring. Okay, now I've got it wound up pretty tight. Let's take a look inside. Bullets, man. As you can see, there is a spring that winds around here in the middle. And then you've got, for lack of a better word, a carousel of bullets. You see there's a little spot there where each of them goes. And so basically you stack these around and then you wind it and then add a few more as it advances up into the feed lips. Now, I currently have this spring wound and ready to go, but I think it might be some time till I'll shoot it. So I kind of want to relieve the tension on that spring. So in order to do that, I need to do this. And that took care of it. There is now no tension on that spring. It's loose as a goose. But that's about it. And now I've got, uh, like I said, 75 rounds in there. So, oh gosh, at two cent, 20 cents a round these days, it seems, is kind of common. And, you know, it's 15 bucks a time. <laughs> so, and it takes a while to load. But, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a gimmicky thing. Um, you know, obviously shades of the North Hollywood bank robbery, that kind of deal. And as you can see, it just locks up. Just like that. Nifty, nifty magazine, like I, I've said before, it's kind of a novel concept, but there you go. I'm going to take just a minute to talk about a couple other magazines here. I'm not getting into hand mag, handgun magazines, guys, just talking about the rifles today. And uh, here you have one. This is from a Remington 7600 pump. This is a very sturdy steel box magazine that holds four, and you can see the calibers that it can handle. So most of the shorter stroke calibers will go in here. And it's basically built along the same lines as these AK mags. Thicker material. You know, you're, you're going to probably just use this one magazine your whole life of that rifle. I've got a couple others as backup. And then here... This is also for a bolt action rifle, this one. And uh, it's M783, so that's, uh, that's the uh, Remington 783 long action. So your 270 Winchester, like you see in here, um, uh, 30 odd six, some of these longer calibers. 
would go in this magazine. And again, getting the biggest bang for your buck, you can put all these different calibers in these magazines. You, you can do that because you're cycling by hand. You're not doing it near as often as you are with a, a semi-auto. You're not demanding these magazines to do near as much as you're demanding these ones to do. And uh, that kind of makes a lot of sense. You're going to fire so few of these rounds, comparatively speaking. So uh, they can be a lot more forgiving. But one thing they are, if you look real close, it's double feed, or I'm sorry, double stack, double feed. And what does that mean? That means that the bolt can pick up a round on either side. So you, you eject that round, and now your next pickup is over here. And that's the exact same thing that you see with this AK magazine. This is double stack, double feed, alternates from the side to side. It's the same thing that you see with this AR magazine. Double stack, double feed, can load from either side of the top of that magazine. There's a lot of good information that I would point out on magazines. If you're interested in some of the evolutionary stuff when it comes to magazines, failures of uh, magazines and certain, certain uh, semi-auto and submachine gun design, I suggest you check out Ian at Forgotten Weapons. He has a lot of material on that. So, moving right along, you kind of see my arrangement, how I like to store ammo. These cans aren't very much. I think I can get them for six bucks a piece. They are watertight, and I'm able to store ammo in there. Oh, probably about uh, 700 rounds in each one of them. I want to say it's six or 700 rounds. I'd have to go back and do the math. But I've got, a, I got uh, quite a few of those green cans. And of course you see the old standby 7N6 5.45 Spam can. I actually opened mine and here is some of it. That's how it comes. It's not marked other than just a little proof stamp. Okay. Um, it's getting to the point now where the 7N6, which used to be a lot cheaper to shoot and people didn't mind it being corrosive because, hey, for all the money you're saving, um, now, to buy ammo, and I want you to concentrate on that, 82 on the bottom there, that is the year I graduated high school. Um, so we're looking at ammo that is, what, 35 years old? And I've seen 81 out there and so forth and so on. So um, it is no longer cheaper to shoot. It still is highly corrosive. It's getting older and tests I've seen on this ammo show that it is not near as consistent as a lot of the commercial stuff. So, we have that to look at. But anyway, uh, times always are a-changing. Um, looking at the 5.45 category now, first thing I, I have to notice is... <sighs> here's the Tapco magazine that, that I think came with a 5.45 that I no longer have. Um... It is, um, it is loaded, so I'm not going to chuck it over at the door. But if I was, if it wasn't loaded, what's real common with, with uh, these magazines and what's different, in my opinion, with the 7.62, these things can be a lot more beat up. This is a Tula, just like its 7.62 brother over there. These can be a lot more beat up and still work. See there, based on that ammo, that's Tiger. You can tell because that purple ring. Okay, the most successful magazines um, that you can probably get the best built are these Circle Tens, and uh, that pretty much rounds out what I have. Circle Tens, some Circle Twenty Ones, some older stuff. Um, I am a big fan of this Plum Izvesk mag. Izvesk, Russian. You recognize that logo there. Um, it's been used. It's a little bit beat up. This thing works great. And I like that look. Very, very subtle plum. A lot of it's kind of wore off. But it looks great with the rifle. But I haven't had issues with any 5.45 mags, even the Tapcos. Although the Tapcos sometimes are a little bit harder to fit. Um, but any, any, any other magazine I've had for 5.45 has worked like a champ. And a lot of that has to do with the design of the gun. A lot of that has to do with 
improvements over time and knowledge learned from this puppy right here. It's a preceding platform. So, kind of a brief overview. Okay, guys. Well, just another brief look at uh, overview, I should say, of, of uh, magazines in my collection. Just kind of wanted to show you what I look for and demonstrate my somewhat limited knowledge on the subject. But there are absolutely people that are highly knowledgeable, enthusiastic about magazines. There are several uh, pages on Facebook that discuss nothing except collecting AK magazines. So you've got a, a, raw, a broad range of users to collectors. I am not a collector. I am a user. Uh, I can tell you of the, of the magazines that I showed you, nothing's more expensive that I've seen uh, as far as a rifle magazine goes, uh, mainstream, than uh, the AK-74 mags. You're going to be spending 30 bucks and up if you want something decent. Um, AK mags, steel mags, uh, 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 Eastern block surplus, uh, can be hit or miss, depends on the batch or how old they are, but, uh, usually you're spending 10, 15 bucks for these. So you can take that kind of chance. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in and watching my channel. If you care to support my efforts, you can go to my Patreon page. That link's located on my channel homepage. Thanks again for watching. This is DR Drake 63. Have a great day.